Good morning, grade eights, and welcome to another lesson uh, on data handling. And today, we're going to do something very interesting, and I know you guys like to draw, isn't it? So today, we're going to focus on graphs. In other words, how to represent your data you have collected. Remember, we spoke about the data cycle the other day? And now, so today, we're looking at how to present the data to make it uh, interesting and to make it more meaningful. Right, so that is the main idea. So shall we start? Right, so today we're going to look at, again, data handling, right? And the introduction to graphs, right? Now, graphs are often used to display data. Very important, right? We use graphs to display your data. Remember, you've collected all that information, you put them in a table, but still doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But now, you can make it more presentable by drawing a graph. Many people find graphs simpler to understand and I'm sure you guys do agree with that. That many people prefer, if you open a newspaper, a graph will attract your attention immediately, isn't it? Instead of a table. Right. So they're also more attractive and interesting. So like I just said now, so it, it catches your, your eye immediately. Right. A graph can show data clearly without lots of words. Remember, sometimes a person is a bit lazy. You don't want to read a lot of words. So a, a picture or a graph can tell you a lot of things. Right. This helps you to see patterns and to compare things easily. Right. So I'm sure that, that is, you, you do agree with me that, that graphs does that. It will give us a better idea and a more clear picture of what whoever is trying to tell you. So that is the, the, the idea or the reason why we use graphs. And I'm sure you agree with me. Right. Let's look at the following activity quickly. Right. What do you think the graphs below are telling us? What do you think these graphs are telling us? Right. Yeah, have a quick look at that graph. You'll see it is on my favorite sport, namely soccer, rugby, cricket, athletics. And of course, there are those people who don't have any interest in sport. So therefore, none. I want you guys just to look at this graph. right? And just quickly amongst each other, a, a quick discussion. And let's see, do you have an idea what the graph is telling you? So, shall I give you a few minutes for that? All right, let me give you a few minutes, have a look, talk amongst each other, and then when we come back, I want to hear your ideas about the graph. So please, guys, amongst yourself, with your friend next to you, or in groups, have a quick discussion on what does this graph tell you. All right. So please start now.
Right, welcome back, guys. So, yes, I'm sure you guys had a lot of to talk about, isn't it? So, let's see. I have a lot of faces there. A lot of smiling faces, did you see? And it seems like soccer got more faces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. Uh, cricket got four. Rugby got three. And here by athletics, ah, oh, what is this? I see half faces. What, what, what does that mean? Well, okay, fine. Uh, but I'm sure you guys had your discussion. So let's go to the next one. I right, just go to the next one. Right, now I want you to look at the following graph, right? It talks about facilities and services at school. If you look at the graphs here, you will see on the uh, vertical axis, we have percentage. On the horizontal axis, we have type of facilities or service. Then we have mathematics teacher, electricity, running water, telephone, library, computer, email, internet. And then there's these bars. Look at this one. is the tallest one. This is maybe the shortest one. So all these bars. So again, amongst yourself, I want you to again have a quick discussion. What is this graph telling you? Is this graph talking to you? And what is this graph telling you? Right, so, so I'll give you another few minutes. Please, guys, again, like before, a few minutes starting now. Right, so remember, for, for each graph, you have three minutes to discuss it.
Okay, I'm sure you had an interesting discussion, and I'm sure this graph do tell you a lot. Let's look at the next one. What do we see now? Now we see another graph which is slightly different from the previous one. And here we have number of learners on the vertical axis. We have height in centimeters on the horizontal axis. And then we have all these little values written here. Can you see, guys? All these values written here. And then all these bars, I see there's a tall one. Here's two short ones. So again, I want you guys to take three minutes at least to talk about this graph and then we'll come back and I want to see whether you agree with my conclusions. All right, so please guys, again, amongst each other, to your friend next to you, starting now. Okay, guys, welcome back, and let's look at a fourth graph, right, right, here I have another graph, a fourth one now, and let's have a look at this, oh, this one looks like a circle, and it, it addresses eye color of 120 learners, what are the colors of the eyes, look at the graph, looks like a circle, as you can see, with brown, green, other, and blue. Again, I want you amongst each other to talk about this graph and see, can you make some sense of it? And what is the graph telling you? Right, so please guys, the same like the previous three, again, amongst each other, have a short three minutes discussion, starting now.
Okay, guys, welcome back. And now I hope you had some interesting uh, debate and discussions amongst each other. Right. So I'm sure that you perhaps recognize some of the graphs and perhaps you also gave them names. So let's see where you spot on. Right, so look at, if you remember the first graph, right? Yes, you were right. The first one was a pictograph. Yes, you were right. The first one was what we call a pictograph. The second one was a bar graph. Yes, you were right. A bar graph. The third one was a compound. No, no, we haven't discussed this one yet. But those two are actually linked. And the, the next one, the third one, was the, so that was the first graph. Those were the second graph. And the histogram was the third graph. Right. And of course, the fourth one, you remember the fourth one? The fourth one, yes, was the pie graph. Or some people call it pie chart. Yes, it was spot on. Right. So let's do it once more. The first graph was a pictograph. Second one, bar graph. Third one, histogram. And the fourth one, a pie chart. Yes, so you were spot on. Now, guys, let's look at those graphs in more detail. Right, starting with, let's scroll down here quickly. Right, starting with a pictograph. The very first one, if you remember. A pictograph gives you a quick impression. Right, gives you a quick impression of the given information. A pictograph uses a simple picture or symbols. So in other words, the idea is to use little drawings and pictures. Now you must remember, guys, when you do graphs, you must remember who is your target audience. In other words, who are supposed to see these graphs. So you must decide. You know, in our country where we still have a high rate of illiteracy, Maybe, look, I, I'm not insulting people, don't get me wrong, but maybe sometimes for, for, uh, for the more illiterate people, a pictograph will make more sense instead of a bar graph. So be careful who's your target audience. So the, whoever you're going to show the graph, that will determine what type of graph you're going to show them. All right. Right. A pictograph are often used in newspapers. I'm sure if you open a newspaper, a magazine, you will see a pictograph, right? And perhaps even, guys, maybe a good idea with your teacher, maybe to start collecting these graphs and bring them to school. Bo they're in books, on television, because comparing data in pictographs is easy. Just compare how many pictures each item has. Right, so that is an idea of what we mean by a pictograph. I'll be fine with that. Okay, right. Now we're going to look at the example. Right. The 2009 school census was run at Annelles School. The results were analyzed the results and it was found that the favorite sport of the boys in her school was soccer, rugby, cricket and athletics. Annele drew up a table to show the percentages of the boys that liked each sport. And there you are, there's the table. So for soccer, 14%, remember percentage is always out of 100, so 14 out of 100 loved soccer, rugby, 6%, cricket, 7%, athletics, 3%, and 
no favorite sport. Like I said earlier on, some people don't have much interest in sport, and they were about 3%. Now remember, if you add up, it should add up to, most of the time, 100%. Are we okay with it? Now you must draw a pictograph, right, to present this data. Right, you must draw a pictograph to present the data. So let's see. Right, now remember, if I can just have both on the screen. Right. Soccer, remember, 14%. But look here for soccer, I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 faces. Okay, let me just write here, 7 faces. 14%, 7 faces. Do you see the relationship between the number 14 and 7? Rugby, 6%. Let's count. 1, 2, 3 faces. Uh-huh. 6 and 3. 7 and 14. Can you see there's some pattern here? Okay. Uh, cricket, one, two, three and a half. Let's see, three and a half and seven. Three and a half and seven, uh, seven and fourteen, three and two. Makes you think. Athletics, three, one and a half. Okay, three, one and a half. And of course, no favorite sport, three, and none is also one and a half. So guys, can you see, it seems like the one is double the other one. Did you pick it up? So let's see. Right, the one is double the other one. Aha, uh -huh, you see your key. Two percent. So one face is the same as 2%. So you see, the one is double the other one. So if I go back quickly, aha, uh -huh, you see, so each face is 2%, then 2 times 7 is 14. So it makes sense, guys. So each face represents 2%. And I'm sure you guys saw that. So this will be 6, 3 times 2 is 6, right? This one is three and a half, right, times two, which is seven. This one is one and a half times two, which is three. And the same with this one. One and a half times two is three. Now, very important, guys, when you do this, you must have a title, right? Remember, you must have a, right? A title, right? And you must have a key, right? So when you do a pictograph, you must have a title and you must have a key. Very important. Otherwise, the graph will not make sense. Are we okay with that? All right. So, pictographs have two main disadvantages. In other words, things which is not very agreeable. Let's see. Right, you, uh, you, they can take a lot of time, people. To draw graphs take a lot of time. Sometimes you might not have enough time. So that is one disadvantage. Unless you are spending time on a special project, Use symbols that are quick and easy to draw. So don't go and do intricate drawings, people. Easy, like, like little face. You want to draw a face as quickly. Your face, your two eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Can you see? So it is quick. To draw a face is quick. So, so use symbols which goes quick and doesn't take long. They are not always very accurate. That is the other problem. Because the data is often simplified before you draw. So, so a lot of the, the, the information goes missing. 
fractions of pictures are like, like the half face. It, it, it is an estimate. It is not exactly what you would like to show. So those are the two minor disadvantages. But otherwise, picture graph is a good way to present data. All right. Now we're going to look at the next one, which was the bar graph, if you remember. The bar graph. A bar graph uses bars, right? No, not that other bar where you go for drinks. Uh-uh. Other bars, right. To display data in different categories. Very important. In different categories. Right. The length of the bar stands for the size of the data. So the length or the height of the bar stand for the size. This makes the data easy to compare. Right, now very important that you must know that bars can be drawn horizontally. That means like that. Or it can be drawn vertically, meaning like that. Is that clear, guys? So bars can be drawn vertically, or they can be drawn horizontally. It doesn't matter. And the gaps are left between the bars. Why do you think there will be gaps? Well, this is data which is discrete, so there are intervals or there are little gaps in between. Unlike a histogram, you'll see later on, where there's no gaps, because the values are continuous. Right, so please Bear that in mind. All right. Now, here's an activity for you. You must draw a bar graph to illustrate the facilities and services at your school, right? Which was, it was a census done by Stats Essay in 2009. So these are real stats, people. Right, remember that. If you look at maths teachers, 68,6%. Electricity, 65,9%. Running water, 60,5%. Telephone, 69,8%. Library, 24,6%. Computer usage, 53,0%. Email, 14,7%. And internet, 14,5. That is the data when they've done their survey. Remember, the last time I told you, when you do your research, you ask questions, and when you get all your data, you put them in a table like this. So this is the data in the table. Now, here's your guidelines. Step one, you need a title for your graph. Please, people, any graph must have a title. Remember the pictograph? There must be a title so that whoever looks at your graph must know what this graph represents. Right, so very important. Step number two, you need two axes. One axis and two axes. Plural form, right? Remember, guys, very important. Axis is spelled like that with an I for one X. But with two, you, you spell it axes, meaning the plural form more than one. So you need a Y axis and an X axis. Same like graphs. Right. In this example, the vertical axis will be the percentages and the horizontal axis will be the type of Service. If I can just take you back quickly, right? Then you will see facilities and percentages. Is it clear, guys? So that is what we're dealing with here, right? Step number three: determine the scale. Very important. You need to have a, a proper scale, people. Otherwise, if your scale is incorrect, your graph might be distorted. By that I mean the graph might give the wrong impression or the wrong idea what you're trying to tell. So be very careful with your scale. Right. 
Step number four. Now you must draw the graph, draw each bar corresponding to the value of the category. All right, so you get the idea. Right, are you sure? Right. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, I am going to do it with you as an example. Now, have a look. Maths teachers, 68,6%. So I can scroll down. Maths teachers, can you see there? 68, 6. So let's talk about the title. So there's your title. Remember I mentioned that your graph must have a title. So there's your title. Don't forget. Then I also said you need two axes. So this, the vertical one is your percentage, and your horizontal one is the type of facility. So there's your y-axis and your x-axis. And you must name them. Don't forget, you need to name them. Now the scale. What you can do is some advice. Look at your biggest value. And your biggest value is 68,6. And that will give you an idea how your scale must look like. And if you look at the values, the smallest one is 14,5. So there's a range which is not too big. So, if your biggest value is 68,6, then I would advise you to go up to 80. So you go up to 80. So your highest scale will be 80. Don't go to 500 now, people, because it doesn't make sense, isn't it? If your biggest value is close to 70, then maybe you can go up to 80. Is it clear? And look here, a year we dealt in tens. Zero. Of course, the origin is always zero. Then 10, 20. So we're dealing with tens. 10, 20, 30. Because it looks more or less appropriate. The size of the bars, guys, please don't make it too fat or too thin. Use your own discretion. And have proper visible graphs. Doesn't, there's no it doesn't tell you how fat they should be or how thin, but you use your own discretion. Right. So those are the essential elements of a graph. And then, of course, you draw your graph. I'm sure you guys will be able to do this, definitely. And then you take your values and you draw each graph individually. Right. And I'm sure you'll be able to do that. I I'm sure about that. Right? Are you okay with that? All right. Now we go to another type of bar graph called a compound bar graph. A compound bar graph. Now this is used to display data in different categories. Ah, so there's now more than one category. Remember previously we only dealt with one category, services. But now we have more than one category, right? So let's see. So you must draw a, a, a bar for each category. A compound bar graph is a combination of two or more bars. Two or more bars. Right, let's see. Right, now here I got a little activity for you. The 2009 census school asked learners what their favorite sport was. Right. The following table gives you the percentages of girls and boys. So there's your two different categories. You see now, now we have boys and we have girls. So it's two different categories which you must portray on one graph. There does the word double bar graph come to. You see? So there will be a bar for boys and a bar for girls. And of course, their favorite sport. Right. So there's your info. Now please, guys, I want you, your teachers to help you now. It's, it's always nice to have graph paper, maybe, or block paper. Then your graph looks nicer, isn't it? If you don't have that, then you can use a, a clean sheet of paper. But please, guys, not freehand. Use a ruler to draw your x-axis 
draw your y-axis, give your graph a title, decide what goes on the y-axis, what goes on the x-axis, remember, we're dealing here with, and then we have boys and girls, right? So do you think you'll be able to do it? Right. Can I give you a few minutes to try this one? Okay? So ask your teachers to help you. But remember now, you must draw two graphs. Right. Have a discussion amongst each other and see, do you manage? Then I'll come back and I'll show you the example. Please, so about three minutes, just to talk about it. Maybe not draw it now, but just get your paper ready and talk about it. Starting now. Okay, guys, welcome back. I hope we had a, a, a fruitful discussion. So let me see how we are going to do this one. Right. Remember, we have boys and we have girls. And so again, you choose, you name your axis. We can just scroll down here quickly. Right. You name your axis, that is uh, percentages and sport. The title, don't forget. And then, of course, you choose a scale that works. And you will see that boys will be the lighter shade and girls will be the darker shade. This is what we call the key. So your graph must have a key. So people can know exactly which bar is for boys and which bar is for girls. And what you see is you just draw the two bars next to each other. So you can compare boys and girls. So if you look at soccer, you can see more boys like soccer than girls. So do you get the idea, guys? 
I'm sure you, you'll be able to do it. All right, so let's go to the next one. Now we're going to look at the histogram. What? Remember this, our fourth graph, remember? Uh, the third graph, the histogram. All right. A histogram is a grouped data. Now, very important, people. Group data is where you put data together in groups. Because uh, you have too many uh, uh, information, so you have to put them in groups to make sense. All right. And there's no gaps between. Very important. There's no gaps between the bars. So they are continuous next to each other. Right. Now, when you draw bar graphs, right, right, they are drawn corresponding in height to the frequency of each group. So bars are drawn corresponding in height to frequency of each group. The intervals, I'll show you now, of groups are shown along the horizontal axis. I'll show you now. The frequency or how often sometimes things happen is shown in the vertical axis. The frequency is just how many times does it occur or happen. Right. Let's look at the example. The height of the height of 150 learners in the grade 8 class at Makosi School are recorded in the given table. You must draw a histogram. Right, so there's your table. Now, quickly, guys, these are 115 to 120. You notice there's a less than or equal sign, and there's only less than. That means 115 is included, it's part of the value, but 120 is excluded because there's no equal sign. Then in the next row, you start with the 120. So there's a continuous flow. There's no gaps. Can you see? If you end with 120, you start with, I mean, 125, you start with 125. So you can see, guys, the, the, there's a continuous flow. There's no gaps in between. Are we okay with that? Frequency is how many times? So with the first one here, there are six learners. Can you see? All right, so let's go to the next page now. Right. And when you draw the graph, again, remember, you need a title, you need a y-axis, and you need an x-axis, and you need an appropriate scale. Right. And you will see that in group data, if you look at the first one, Sorry about that. 115 to 120, and the frequency is 6. There you are. There's the 1, right? And it goes up to 6. You see the guy? So there's the first one. Right. Then just quickly one more. The next one is 120 to 125, and the frequency is also 6, and that is why... This one got exactly the same height. Just one more. Let's take this one here. 140 to 145. Right. 140 to 145 is that one. And there you are. The bar goes up to about 26. Right. So there you are. So you get the idea now. Bar graphs, there are gaps. Histograms, no gaps. It's continuous because it is what you call continuous data. Are we cool with that? All right. Now the homework activity. This is for your homework, guys. Take note. Right. In the same 2009 census, the learners from grades 3 to 7 at Roos School were asked how long in minutes it takes for them to travel to school. Now the table... gives you all the information. So you must use this table and you must draw a histogram. Use the table to draw a histogram. Right. So I want you to copy this. That there, There's more homework. So 
co quickly copy this one, and then I'm going to scroll to the other page to show you the other examples, which is also meant for homework. Right, so guys, I hope that you've managed to copy all the examples for homework, right? Make sure, please, very important, homework must be done. Please, don't forget. And please, your graphs must be neat and tidy. Don't forget the title, the x-axis, the y-axis, the proper scale. Right, guys, so I'll see you next time. Have a, have a good week and take care. Bye-bye.